well, getting back to Captain America, the thing about Captain America that I'm really scared about uh, is they're going to explain too much. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I want a fun Captain America movie, and they're going to make an origin. It's, you know, kind of going to happen because they're already casting the scientist who turned him into Captain America. Well, I'm not mad um, about – like with his story, I'm not actually mad that they're doing an origin because yeah, no, no. his origin could be fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the whole, whole idea of because uh, I've read, I've dabbled in the Ultimate Captain America and Ultimate stuff, and his origin over there is really fun. The thing that they did with Captain America's origin, I think they brought it into the new thing, is they connected him to Wolverine, but very slightly. Like he was the first weapon, and you know, Wolverine's Weapon X. You know, and the idea of just Captain America kind of being an experiment, and they're not really sure what to do with him, and they're just really just saying, okay. You want to do it here? We're going to test you, and if it works, you work for the government. Really, was a an interesting idea for me if you do it well. Yeah. The other thing about him is, is this is one of these movies that, like, when you go to see Green Lantern, you don't know, you don't necessarily know the end. You know what's going to happen at the end, but you don't necessarily know the ending. If you go see, like, when you go see Thor, you don't know the ending. Captain America is one of those movies that every comic book fan knows the ending. Yes, he's going to fall into the water and get frozen. Yes, we all know the ending. So that's kind of that's going to be funny how they how they do that is how how they're going to work with the whole fact that he, he is going to get frozen and he is going to fall in that water and that's going to happen. So um, yeah, because like like other people like I was actually hearing people talk about how some people were actually surprised in Dark Knight where um, when um, Harvey Dent became Two Face and I'm like. <laughs> They are. No, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I knew a person like that too. They they said I thought that mob boss was supposed to become Two Face, <laughs> and yeah, well, you know, um, the thing about Captain America that I well, first what I'm really excited about is though we know we're going to get to point A to point B, you have a whole twenty years of just story you could do with it. I mean, you have well, maybe not twenty, maybe ten years of just story of you know. Captain America fighting Hitler, Captain America fighting Red Skull, Captain America and Bucky, Captain America and the Invaders. And you can do so much in those that hour and a half that you have to get to point B that you can tell a good story and then put him into the water. Well, my biggest problem with this movie, now that I think about it, and I think it is a big problem, is that, that they sequel everything. And I don't mind the sequeling. I actually love sequels. I don't know where you are on sequels. But I think, I think sequels they're... was the greatest thing ever created because I love stories and I love to hear more about my favorite characters. Yeah, I think that sequels done well is actually, you know, it can be connected. I think the best kind of sequels are the are the sequels that branch off and make their own movie. They also, they continue the story. They don't always have to continue the same characters. I mean, most sequels do, but um, I think movies that are meant to have sequels are meant to have sequels. But if a movie has a solidified ending, like the main character dies, you shouldn't keep milking it and milking it and say, oh, this is the character's son. Oh, this is the character's cousin. Uh, But I think sequels can be very useful. Yeah, but um, but the thing about the Captain America sequel is... We're not getting the war for the second movie. We're not going to get what Captain America is unless they do something kind of like uh, kind of like Wolverine Origins where they say, okay, this is how it began, this is how it ends. Well, the next movie is going to be somewhere in the middle. That could be interesting, but I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah, they're probably just going to kick it straight into Avengers and then maybe have Captain America in modern day. Yeah. Um, actually, now that I thought about it, um, how do you feel about the other characters that will be in the movie? Like they're going to have um, the uh, the other ones that are going to be in the movie. Like Tony Stark's father is confirmed to be in the movie. Um, with Tony Stark's father, I think it, it brings a nice connection. Like, oh yeah, this is in the same universe, just reminding you. But I think, I mean, the idea of Tony Stark's father doesn't put me off because you know he did work in World War II. He did help make technology. I think they even said that he helped bring the atom bomb or something like that. Um, so that doesn't put me off. It's just I'm afraid that they're going to wait down too much, especially with Thor and Captain America. That Hey, guys, this is in the same universe as Iron Man, so we're going to put in a bunch of references. And I think the references are fine on its own, but I think well, there's such thing as too much. Well, I, I'm in the band camp that I love it because I love comic books because you can be reading a Spider-Man and have Wolverine just randomly pop up for a panel. Yeah, and I've yeah, always loved that. 
And I'm hoping that we get to a point where we can actually have that, like, we have a Thor movie, and then for some reason, um, Spider-Man shows up and says, hey, do you need help with this guy? Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> that would be sure, fan- but- What? Yeah. You know, I'm not sure if an actor would... Well, I mean, act- any actors would do anything. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you have, like, big-name actors, and this is the problem with big-name actors, if you have big-name actors, they want big-name bucks to be in cameos. And that's yes. why I think they should get nobodies, because a nobody, like, a, a nobody is not going to want Uba Bucks to be a cameo. Yeah, they're, 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 they'll do it for cheap. Yeah. Um, have, just quickly, um, this is just a side topic. I guess it kind of goes into our topic. Have you heard of Runaways before? Yes, I've heard of it. Never read it. Sorry if um, that's this, bad. But I no, do no, want no. them to make a Runaways movie. I th- I, I've i heard uh, Blows Himself Up to talk about that a lot. And he wants a Runaways movie probably more than anything else. And I think it would be interesting. Yeah, uh, I saw the casting calls page, actually. Um, the casting calls just ended. Um, the thing about it is, they said, I, I'm not sure if it was the Runaways, but I think one of the roles said, you will not be paid anything. And I'm like, Really? <laughs> Yeah, but I guess kids that are like 16 to, you know, 18 who want to be in the movie don't care. They'll just jump into a movie. Yeah, that's that's cool. Something else that I wanted to kind of off topic too that I wanted to ask you is um, I don't know how many people you know on YouTube, but um, there's this guy I listen to occasionally. I don't know why. He's a moron. Um, but he's Smokestack. I think Smokestack or something like that. Uh-huh. He does reviews. And stuff like that. And um, he did an Iron Man 2 review, okay? Uh-huh. And um, do you know what do you know about Captain America? Um, uh, I've only read really uh, some do of Do you know where he was before. born? Uh, no, I don't. I never really thought about that. Okay, well, I'll answer that in this, okay? So he's talking in his review, and he's saying that um, uh, basically he's talking about how Iron Man, was, uh, Iron Man 2 is such a bad film because... Like, um, they disrespected Captain America so much in that movie. Um, he takes out a shield, and he uses it, and he uses it to hold stuff up, and that's so disrespectful to him. And, and I'm going to get to why I think this is, this is wrong, and this is, and he's such but an idiot. What, thing. But that's what Tony Stark would do. He wouldn't care if it's his shield or not. Well, the point is, he has no idea what that shield is. For all he knows, that could be some useless thing. I mean, it's in a box of junk. Yeah, yeah, I mean... And then um, he says... In the first one, he- uh, what did you say? In the first one, he uh, he's, he just has it on a table, and he, he moves for a split second, and you, you see it, and then he just moves back, and you don't see it again. Yeah, the point is that he doesn't know what relevance this is. Maybe if he knew that it was some legendary hero shield, he'd probably frame it up. Maybe not, because he is Tony Stark. But the point is that he doesn't know that. And, and then uh, there's another scene where they mention Canada, and he's like, oh, that's another re- – uh, that's another – and they're making fun of uh, Captain America because he was born in Canada. And I'm like and – and I immediately go in my head and I'm like, Captain America is the all-American hero. Because the all-American hero would <laughs> be born in Canada. And I look it up and he was born in New York City and I'm like, yeah, okay, yes, that's true. you're trying to tell me he's the all-American – you're trying to complain about something. That, now, if you would have brought up Wolverine, then he would have had footing to stand on, but – when you say something that is wrong, you kind of lose all credibility. Yeah, but I mean, in comic books, either way, comic book characters don't like each other. Not a lot of them. I mean, there's teams, sure, but not everybody on the team like each other. So yeah. it's totally like Tony Stark to make fun of other people, even if it's indirectly. Yeah, but but I don't. I, I I never felt that he was making fun of Captain America when he was using the shield that way. Because first of all, is you ha- you have to assign you you have to assign relevance to something before you do it. If um if like you find a box of a bunch of stuff from your grandfather, and you find this old you find this old watch, and you take it out and you use the battery in uh in one of your handheld game systems, you're not being disrespectful because you have no idea what that watch is. That could have been a watch your grandfather wore all through the war. You don't know this. Yeah, and, or it could just be a piece of junk that he got, you know, one year. It, it, yeah. I mean, the, the truth is, um, Tony Stark, um, I, I doubt, it, even if he did have some kind of relevance, because, you know, uh, um, the agent says, do you know what this is? He's like, 
he just looks at it for a second like he doesn't even remember what it is, and he's just like, wow, well, whatever. I, I, I really hope, like, um, they're probably not going to, but I don't even know if that's the original Captain America shield because it looks a lot more flashy than the one they're using in um, yeah. the movie. Yeah, I don't know if it is either, but um, but actually another thing is, and I have this, uh, I don't, I, he's not my friend anymore, but I have this moronic friend who, uh, who hated Iron Man. He hated the movie. And, like, the biggest reason he hates the movie is because he doesn't like uh, – he does not like Iron Man. Like, he doesn't like the character Tony Stark. He thinks the character is a pump his ass. And he enjoyed the character in the movie, so thus the movie is bad because it's inaccurate because he enjoyed Tony Stark. <laughs> and I find that so funny that how can you like a performance and think it's a bad movie? Uh I mean, there, I mean, there is a difference between you know being. Oh, I mean, I mean, the really the difference. It's, don't, there's not a lot of difference between Tony Stark in the comics and Tony Stark in the movie. I mean, now Tony Stark's a lot more serious and he doesn't crack as many jokes. But you know, I, I in my opinion, they were probably drawing from the old, early '70s stuff where he yeah. was very jokey. You know, well, he was always getting drunk and stuff like that. Another thing he brings up is that is that Tony Stark is just a rip off of Batman, and I'm like. Like, like he's trying to say that his personality is a rip off of Batman, and I'm like, no, no, he's not. Um, Batman is not a playboy. Batman doesn't want to sleep with all these women. Batman doesn't want to be going to parties. He does it as a cover. Tony Stark does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, the truth is, like, um, I, I think blows some stuff up. Dude did a video about it. Um, but I think the biggest difference is, you know. There's one scene in Iron Man 2 that, that I love to death. When you know he, get, everybody hates it, but you know when he gets drunk at the thing and his mask is half off and everything like that, and he's like, um, he was like, you know how I pee in this suit, and then he, you know he does it like, um, I think that's just proof because Bruce Wayne in Batman Begins when he gets he acts like he's drunk and he's all like you know slurring and stuff. You can clearly see that he did it for a cover. Um, like the scene before, he's all like, I have to get these people out of here. Let me act drunk and get them out. Tony is like, you know, I'm going to die, so let me just get drunk in my Iron Man armor. Yeah. No, but um, – yeah, but I, I, as I uh, probably mentioned earlier, I do a lot of writing, and I have a character kind of like Batman in one of my stories. Uh, it's like a TV show that I'm writing a pilot for um, about like a lot of supernatural things that come together. And one of the characters basically was an aborted child or was uh, – his mother tried to abort him, and he never got aborted. And he uh, basically he grew up well. Basically, he grew up on the uh, he gr- he grew uh, like a bum that used to be a cop. Uh, was it, basically was a surrogate father because his father's actually a Wall Street uh, millionaire and his mother is a prostitute. Yeah. And so in the story, in, in the story, what happens is is that he's raised by this uh, he uh, he's raised by this bum uh, who used to be a cop and basically uh, a bad cop comes to him and kills him in cold blood for no reason. And so he ends up becoming a world-famous vigilante, and basically he doesn't like drinking. He doesn't want to be – he doesn't want to be at parties, but it's his cover, and he does it because that's the only way he'll ever be able to continue what he's doing because what he does is he starts a party and then sneaks out the window and goes kill somebody. And then when the cops ask him, when the cops start to investigate, well, if he needs a cover, well, guess what? He was at a party, and women saw him go into a bedroom, so obviously he didn't leave the room. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and I also think that that's uh, – I, I always wonder how Iron Man kept his secret identity for so long because as Iron Man, he's joking around and he's doing all this crazy stuff. And as Tony Stark, he's getting drunk, joking around, sleeping with women. I mean other than him wearing a suit of armor and blowing villains' heads off, not a big difference. Yeah, no, and, I agree, and I agree with you. Um, I completely agree with you. The character isn't very much different. And, and I find that fascinating that he is not very much of a different character because Batman is a cover, as I said earlier. But uh, Tony Stark is such an interesting character because he is a character. He's human. He has flaws. And, that, and that's what Marvel does best is they have characters that actually have flaws. They don't have the perfect characters. They don't have – they have people that are real they can feel for. And that's why Spider-Man did so well is because you can relate to Spider-Man. You can't relate to Batman. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen it, but one of my favorite superheroes is actually uh, Bucky from Captain America, and I like him a lot more than um, Captain America, like Steve Rogers, because Steve Rogers essentially 
he is the golden boy of the Marvel Universe. Like, he, if you're going to get closest to Superman in character, not actual, you know, powers, it's going to be Steve Rogers, because Steve Rogers is not going to compromise for anything. Bucky it messes up. Like, he, there's a scene where he's in a bar, and he's, like, all sad because uh, Steve's dead or whatever. And he's like, you know, I shouldn't start beating people up. And then, like, you skip to a panel later, and everybody in the bar is, like, beaten up. And he's like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. And he just leaves. 